from their neighboring countries to grow it and from Monsanto. And it's, it's you know, going to those countries that people think like people are starving and people are really worse off without GMOs, going there and actually visiting and seeing how they farm and seeing what they're doing is really inspiring because not only do they have an amazing biodiversity of so many different crops, not just corn and soy and canola, but like everything under the sun from cabbage to avocados to carrots and everything being grown there that they can, I mean, they're like, they're absolutely have the most rich soil. And if I can't even imagine the Sweet potatoes, roses, you know, most of the roses you get are from Africa. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine the devastation that would happen if they started this monoculture type crops there that would just degrade the soil um, time after time and just strip it of all that's amazing nutrients. And so it's really inspiring to see some of these countries like fight back and say no to Monsanto. And it's it's really great that that's happening. But we're we're like, you know, what's what's really crazy to me is that we are one of the countries that has the most rights out of any citizens across the globe. And the right that we don't have is the right to know what's in our food. And they go and beyond that, that, though. They'll ban our right to know what's in our food with the Dark Act, which passed the House and is now going to be voted on next month by the Senate, which says literally mandatory labeling of GMOs will be illegal. And that was pushed by the very representatives that are paid off. Yeah, that's in case though. a state does have a referendum and says, no, we're going to label. Yeah. The feds are saying, no, you can't. Which Texas may do. I mean, Vermont already has it, mandatory GMO labeling. So this will be the feds coming in and saying, no, you're not allowed to know if GMOs are in your food, period. And this is and likely going to be passed. And everyone needs to know if their senator votes for that, that they are complete traitors to American rights. Well, you know, American it's the number one trend I saw earlier on Facebook. Of all billions and billions of posts, it's the number one trend right now. And it makes you wonder... Well, gee, how are these people doing this? It's because they're obviously not acting in our best interests. Meanwhile, we have articles like Monsanto kicked out of Greece and Latvia, GM bans sweep throughout Europe. I mean, Europe is done with this. Scotland and Germany recently booted GMOs out of their country, citing fear of GMO crops contaminating their food supplies and concern over putting their food and beverage industries in jeopardy. Now, Greece and Latvia are telling Monsanto exactly what they can do with their GMO crops. The tide is turning. A tipping point just became evident through new actions of two additional European countries who have had enough of the biotech strong arm. And the Africans used to love the West when they saw the Western medicine men, uh, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago. But now the African leaders say, we know you're stacking traits in there with your Terminator genetics and others that are going to end our agriculture. And the Africans are reading statements to shareholders from 10 years ago and more from Monsanto admitting the plan is a genetic monopoly. So the Africans understand we get seeds out of what we plant over and over again. You're conquering us with this. We don't want it. And then our media goes, dumb Africans don't want our free food. Well, yeah, because they take the vaccines and get sterilized. They've already experienced how wondrous it all is to be under this. They don't want to be destroyed. And they also attack the Argentinians because the Argentinian children would develop these massive tumors being around the Monsanto GMO soy fields and things like that. And they'd always say, oh, they're crazy. They're third world idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. The villagers, they believe in myths. They think their gods are doing it. Yeah, Study. They, they actually... They actually accuse them of mishandling their chemicals, right? Like mishandling their chemicals. Like, first of all, if the chemical is harmless, you if you miss it, I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous what they've done to an entire Sure, the truth is it gets in the well water. It gets in the well water. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and... Anthony, what was that part you're going to finish? Yeah, so this is a new study. I got a bunch of studies today. It seems like a new one comes out every day. Study, children exposed to GMO soy pesticides suffer serious genetic damage. A 2015 study has shown that children exposed to pesticides used to grow GM soy suffer serious genetic damage. Research for Wait a minute, you mean weed killer might not be good for my children? Yeah, who would have thought, right? Oh, you're crazy. You're insane. The Argentinians are crazy. Researchers from the National University of Rio Cuarto, Cordoba, compared children who lived close to a GM soy field growing area in Argentina to children who lived in another city in Cordoba that was not adjacent to GM soy fields. Genetic damage in the group of exposed children was 44% higher than in the unexposed children. Living less than 500 meters from crops routinely sprayed with glyphosate and other pesticides, they had serious, serious genetic damage. Amazing. And we're going to be back in the next segment and finish up with these news items. Before we do that, I wanted to have Vani Hari, the food babe, finish up launching our new initiative last week. Already having an effect. Last week, you wrote an article. Drudge picked it up. Uh, it had been out for a day. Uh, and, then, and then they responded about the inhumane killing of the chickens. 
Another example there. They've gone from an arrogant wall of invincibility, Vani, to now really responding. Uh, that is just so exciting. I guess Gandhi's right. First they ignore you, then they uh, laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. Vani, uh, in closing in the next few minutes, what else is on your radar and what can we do to get uh, the, the biggest, uh, you know, as you said, fast food chain out there in the U.S. at least, Subway, to get the antibiotics out of their meat? Yeah, you know, 23,000 people die every single year in the United States, 700,000 worldwide because of this issue. Because of superbugs, we're being exposed to it in our water, in our soil, and in our food. And we really have an obligation as consumers, as humans, to protect antibiotics so that when we want to have them, That's when right. we want to use them to fight off super or any type of bugs, we should be able to do that. And right now, we're in situations where that's just not possible. A million Americans are affected every single year by this issue. My dad personally was affected by this issue, was, you know, was um, affected by antibiotic-resistant bacteria. By the way, when you use that number, you're, you're using their number. I mean, it's a lot higher than that. Yeah, well, yeah, I am using their number. So who really knows what the real figure is and what they might be hiding from us. But I'll tell you this, you know, I was talking to the former general of the U.S. Army, Wesley Clark, at uh, the Democratic National Convention a few years ago. And he said to me, I said to him, you know, what's the biggest food issue for you? And this is a U.S. Army guy, right? Like, yeah, smart guy. You, know, you expect some like basic kind of response. But he said it's this issue. He said that if we don't address this, this could wipe out the human race. And that is really the I truth. Agree. And so we all need to go ask Subway to submit a formal policy, first of all, to, to open up the discussion so that we can learn about what they're doing because they're they're making these very vague statements that, you know, make us cautiously optimistic that they are, are, are listening, but we really need to see a formal statement like their competitors. We have need to see a capitulation to life and join the life wing, not the death wing. Food Babe, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. We'll be back. Stay with us. Fourth hour coming up. Well, I made the big announcement towards the end of the last hour. And the video breaking it down, the call to arms and the info war is at infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. Please retweet it. Please post it to your Facebook, send out your email. We're we'll broadcasting 27 hours live uh, coming up on the 16th and 17th. And I haven't done one of these in three years because we were able to expand, build the new studios, hire more crew with the revenue coming in from the sales at infowarsstore.com. InfoWarsLife.com, PrisonPlanet.tv subscriptions, and outside advertising. The country's in free fall. Advertising revenues down across the board. We already saw this years ago, moved into direct sales with high-quality products. So we're doing okay in the face of this depression, but really don't have the money to expand and finish going on television. This will reach incredible amounts of people. This is the best bang for the buck. It'll be self-funding once we get on more TV stations, UHF, VHF, which are already turning us on. It's officially, I haven't announced the coordinates and done the rollout yet. I'll do that on the 16th, but um, stations are already there. It's already happening, so I want to thank them. But people understand, used to do this sound like a hardcore show. Now people go, well, I guess this stuff's true. We better put it on air. There's no problem getting viewers. Imagine you watch mainstream television normally. You're flipping through and you come to a three-hour show of this. Or the nightly news, people are like, what in tarnations is this? There's a big a report out today that mainstream TV ratings are yet down again. Even sports has plateaued. And they say it's going to alternative media. All that means is competition. And we are the biggest slice of that competition. And we're here to shake things up. And what we do goes a long way. So uh, check out that video. Big announcement. InfoWars plan to take uh, the InfoWars to the next level and to wake up 400 million People revealed. Please help us get that out to everybody. I have barely plugged today. Didn't plug last hour. Plugged for maybe one minute in the first hour. I'm the worst at actually plugging and trying to fund us. Um, speaking of drug-resistant bugs and stuff, I personally have my backup, Coil Silver, Silver Bullet at InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, we have some other specials, 10% off one of our hottest products, methylcobalamin, vitamin B12. That's 10% off right now. You talk about clean, good energy. That's what it does for me. Briefly, Anthony Gucciardi, before we go to break, come back with five minutes on more news. Then Joe Biggs, Jakari Jackson are coming in uh, with some huge breaking intel on the situation in Houston and the war on police that the White House is running. 
Uh, tell us why Secret 12 is so special while I take some. Secret 12 is awesome because it's methylcobalamin, which is the medical grade B12 that you would usually inject with yourself. Into yourself. But obviously, you don't inject it. You take it under the tongue. And then it has adenosylcobalamin, which are two of the most bioavailable, bioactive forms of B12. And there's a ton of it in it. It's, it's mega bang for your buck. I mean, just to get into it, it's 41,000% of daily value. So this is a super form of B12 that is super powerful, super and it's not available. synthetic, it's alive. Yeah, it's not synthetic. I've tried the synthetic. There's no sugar in it. It's the sweetest thing ever tasted. Yes, it is pure B12, methylcobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, powerfully bioactive. And I've tried the synthetics. I've even uh, tried the injectable synthetics just to see the difference. And I can tell you the synthetics make me feel lethargic, make me feel gross. We did it together. Yeah. We went and saw we went and saw one medical doctor. I went and saw another. One of them gave you synthetic. The other one gave you real. Cyanocobalamin, yeah, yeah, and uh, which is literally made from cyanide, by the way, a derivative, a base of it. So anyway, it did you, nothing for me. It made me feel like crap. But this actually makes me feel good. Remember, energized. you had ten bottles of it. They gave you, you threw away nine. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I don't even want this. And they're expensive too. The injectable stuff you get from the doctor is like a hundred dollars. What, this is this is ten percent off right now on InfoWarsLife.com. I use it every day. You just put it in my protein shake, or you put it in a glass of water, or take it right away. Yeah, you great. get a bigger effect under the tongue, but I just put it in water. I mean, it's amazing, and and, and this is a product we never really push or promoted. It's true. It's already one of the top sellers because it sells anyway. Because people try it, and they go, "Oh my gosh!" No one has ever put out a vitamin B12 we know like this. No, it's absolutely no one. The most bioavailable out there. I, I love it. I take it every single day. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And that's what funds the operation. We'll be back. Stay with us. Fourth hour stations. Welcome to start picking it up, sweethearts. We love you. Jakari Jackson. Joe Biggs. We are back live. Final segment I'm going to be hosting with Anthony Gucciardi. Then Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson are coming into the studio to break down the race war the media is starting. And now... Police chiefs, sheriffs, and others are saying this is the White House running this, which is good because it's true. That means they may back off. But it, it lets you know what a reckless, crazy, revolutionary government we've got run by a bunch of billionaires that wants to have some class warfare breakdown where we all kill each other. Do you think America is dumb enough to buy into this, Anthony? I don't think America is dumb enough to buy into it. I think a lot of Americans are force-fed an ideology they don't even believe in, but they think everyone else believes in it, so they want to fit in with the pack, with the herd. But what they don't realize is it's a, fa a facade. It's artificial facade. It's an artificial mind prison that is pushed like that video you played earlier from MTV. That's absolutely insane. No one in the right mind would agree with that. And I think if you polled people, 99% would disagree. But they see it on TV. They think it's big. They think it's cool. They think they're in the movie Entourage, where everyone is just in L.A. and it's awesome and Hollywood's cool and everyone's so cool and we want to be. Meanwhile, friendly. Hollywood is collapsing. Yeah, meanwhile, it's totally disgusting over there. They don't realize that, though. They, it's a facade. They want to be part of it. They don't want to be looked at by their peers as an outcast. That's why so many people are afraid to voice their actual views. I mean, if you went to a grocery store, how uncomfortable would you feel saying, hey, uh, sir, that's, that's GMO? You know, most people would never do that. They, want, they, they know it's bad, but they don't want to be outcast by people. By the way, I see a pregnant woman with her husband on the street. I stop and say, look into vaccines. I've seen you do Read, it. Read the insert, and my family kind of gets tired of it. They go, oh, my gosh, can you, my kids, can you just stop? They used to. Now they get it, and they warn people. You tell everybody. <laughs> That's the difference. You're willing to talk to anybody, and I'm willing to talk to most people, too. Well, here's the thing. If I'm late or something, I won't do it, but I am not aiding and abetting the enemy. If I, I don't want to spend my time and warn somebody and have them laugh at me or whatever, but i got to do it to help them, or it's on me. I mean, if I knew people were drinking some poison out of a well, I'd have to tell them there was poison in it. Well, it's always weird when we talk to people because you'll be like, hey, that fluoride is bad for you. And that top one, that's not true. You'll, you'll reference studies from Harvard and everything. That, that can't be true. And then they look it up and they freak out. People either don't know or they just pretend to be part of the ideology that's and been put. Exactly. And by the way, I'm not in people's business. I hear gunshots at the neighbor's house or whatever, you know, out in the country. I don't call the cops. If, I, if stuff's going I, I I mind my own business. But it's my business if people are poisoning themselves because it's going to come back on me and my family. I have a responsibility to warn people. Or how about if you let your kids hang out with uh, some other family and they serve a bunch of junk to them or, you know, give them whatever. Say, oh, you should go take your vaccinations and do this and this and this. It is your fa it is your business. My children go to a great you. school. You know, they were homeschooled for a long time, but they wanted to play sports and things. So they go to a nice little private school. Great people. But still, some of the kids there tell them, oh, you don't take vaccines. You're going to die it's illegal not to take vaccines. It just shows the brainwashing, right? From the other kids, it doesn't even it doesn't even matter whether or not we're going to talk about the health issues of the vaccinations. It's your choice to do it or not do it. 
But overall, 